the Cha F Loop 2.0 from Chameleon Antenna. This is now the older sibling to the more recently introduced 3.0 Cha F Loop. If you're like me when you heard rumor that the 3.0 was coming out and shortly thereafter that a remote tuner was going to be made available for it, you probably thought for yourself, I'm going to have to buy that new 3.0. What am I going to do with my 2.0? Kudos to Chameleon Antenna that didn't leave us hanging. They went and they introduced the remote tuner for the 2.0 as well as the 3.0. And this is not the same component set for the 2.0 as the 3.0, so they took some extra effort to make sure that we were taken care of. What follows in this video is going to be a step-by-step -step process of how to install this remote tuner on your F-Loop 2.0. The kit is very straightforward with simple instructions. It includes a remote control with battery, a patch cable, the faceplate, a hardware kit, and the motor unit itself that goes over the shaft of your F-Loop 2.0 control box. The hardware kit will come with an Allen wrench that lets you tighten the two set screws on the new motorized unit, as well as loosen the original set screw on the control knob and the four screws on the faceplate of the original control box. The four screws on the original faceplate were pretty tight and I did use the Allen wrench to loosen them and then I used a screwdriver with the appropriate bit to get them out the rest of the way. With the hardware for the future setup securely in the parts bin, I put my hex key into that set screw on the control knob and loosened it completely. The shaft on the main unit is a round diameter shaft, so once you get the set screw out, it just takes a little bit of upward pressure to lightly pull it off from that shaft, and you're going to want to set this aside in case you ever want to put it back on in the future. As mentioned, I did loosen all four of these screws with a supplied hex key, and of course you could take them out the entire way with that. I chose to remove them with a screwdriver and the appropriate bit, and that just made it go a little bit faster. No need for you to watch me take these four screws out completely. Once you get the four screws out, lift off that top clear plate and the underlying screen print so that you can put it away in a safe place in the event you want to put it back on in the future. Now that you know what the inside of a Maglube control box looks like, take your new faceplate, align it on top of the existing four holes on the control box, and insert the four screws that have been supplied with the hardware kit. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten them. Do not tighten them all the way at this point. Just get them close to snug, but a little loose so that faceplate can move just slightly if needed when you put the motor on top of the shaft. Here you can see the motorized unit has two set screws, two through holes on the face plate of that ring, and one groove machined through the ring. Set your motorized unit on top of the shaft of your main control box and align the two holes on that circular ring on the motor with the two holes on the flat face plate on the main unit. Insert the screws provided and tighten them just snug but not totally tight. Remember, you're screwing these into polymer, so even when it's time to tighten them completely, don't use a power driver. Tighten them by hand and don't over torque them. Make sure the flange of the motor unit is sitting completely flat against the square faceplate and stick your hex key in that machined groove and get it into that first set screw and tighten it completely against the shaft of the control unit. Grab your remote control and install the provided 9 volt battery. Next up, you're going to want to take your power cable and insert it into the port on the motor unit itself on the control box and put the other end in the motor port on the remote control. Turn it on and you will see that there is a green status light flashing. Get ready to press the tune button, but first, Get your eyes on that slot where the set screw is, and as soon as you press the tune button, the shaft is going to start to turn, and you just need to watch until the second set screw shows up and then stop. You know what to do now, right? Turn off the remote control so the shaft can't move while you're working on the unit, and tighten down on that second set screw. And this should be your final tighten. You want to torque down on this because this is how that motor unit is going to grip this shaft. It is a circular, it's a round shaft, so it is these set screws that's holding it in place.
Only one thing left to do here and that's tighten down on the four screws on the square faceplate and the two screws on the motor unit into the square faceplate. Remember you're screwing into polymer so don't go nuts with this and don't use a power driver. And that's it, we finished the build. Now for the function that we get out of this, that was a pretty simple kit to put together and give us new features that we've never had before on this mag loop. Keep your eyes on the screen of my 991A. You'll see how easily I tune into frequency and then tune out of that frequency. And I'll show you more details on this in a future video. A picture is worth a thousand words and therefore a video has to be better. I wanted to share this with you in the event you need to install this remote tuner on your F-Loop 2.0 and perhaps I could be of assistance to you and show you the how. If you're watching this video, you already get use case, so that wasn't the purpose of today's video, but I really have some cool ideas for this I can't wait to share with you soon. Talk to you later, friend. 73.